In my uh, my last video, I um, I created this S in 2D design, uh, and uh, and this was done very precisely using uh, some um, geometry and uh, specific dimensions for these circles and positioning. And um, because uh, this S is going to be laser cut, and this S you see in Fusion 360 is going to be 3D printed, and I want the two to match perfectly so that I can create this. LED light, um, which I showed you in my previous video. Uh, I, did I unplug it in the previous video? I don't know. There we are. Unplugged. I don't know. Is my my camera's completely glitched out there? I think. And I'm going to replug it now. But it looks my. Oh, there we are. <laughs> don't know what happened on the video there, but it's it's bright again. Um, and uh, I'm just going to minimize that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is uh, try to make a more complicated letter. Um, what do I mean by more complicated? Well, this S that I made is a sans serif font, um, which means that you don't have all these little embellishments, um, which have particular names. I think they're called um, tails or, or feet. And, and you know what? Rather than listening to me, why don't I just show you this website that I came across? Because this explains everything really, really well. Um, yeah. Legs? Did I say legs? Uh, although that's just the leg of the K. It's the little ears. I think that's going to be a serif feature. There we are. There's a tail. Um, and uh, little swashes. Uh, there's a little serif bar at the bottom there. Little spur sticking out. So, you know, it's interesting that uh, text uh, actually has an anatomy. And the anatomy is made from very specific uh, parts, each with its own unique name. So, you know, this is a great way of finding more about the anatomy of typography. And uh, while I'm at it as well, I'll just mention that if you come to the design inspiration menu here and click on that, there's some really cool articles as well. So came across this, thought it was rather cool. Check it out. Um, so here we go. I've done a simple sans serif S. Let's see if I can do a more complicated serif font. And in this case, I'm going to do an A. Now, uh, I've not done it in Fusion 360 yet. Uh, I'm going to be doing it in a video after this. So I'm, what I'm going to do is just bring in a, a new 2D design CAD file here. Um, and what, what I've got here, just so it's clear, um, what I've got is the same box. And there you go. I've just slightly different zooming there. So hopefully you can see they're pretty much the same. Um, 150 by 150 millimeters. Uh, this is defining the maximum size I can make my 3D print. Um, and uh, I'm going to try and make this serif A. This A in its current format is simply, I think it's a bookend font. Let's have a look. If I select this, I so I use the, the text tool for this. If I come to properties, there's the A, capital A, settings. Uh, yeah, ah, see, it's a height of 150 millimeters. 150.59. Let's put that back to 150. Oh, no, it's Brussels. Brussels Demi. There you go. Um, confirm that, confirm that. Yeah, okay, well, uh, it hits slightly off at the bottom there. You know, do I, do I go to step lock? Do I bring that in a little bit? What do I do here? Do I expect? Anyway, yeah. Whatever. Does it have to fill the box? I don't know. You know, I could make it narrower. I'm not. I'll keep it that size. But I'm not going to just, you know, effectively make this into an outline and say, hey, finished. Because as I mentioned last time, I've also got to put this into Fusion 360. And uh, just choosing the same font in the same dimensions does not work. I've, I've, I've got to do this actually as an engineering drawing with very specific dimensions um, for all the drawing details. And, uh, and I like that fact as well because it's more precise. It's, it's engineering. It's, it's, it's cool in my mind. Let's see what happens. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this A because that's going to be my kind of backbone. That's going to be my guide because uh, I want to create that style of font. But I'm just going to make this so it is gray because now I'm wanting it so that the lines I'm drawing are going to be more precise and I want them to be snapping to this five millimeter grid as much as possible. So I'm going to go back onto gridlock. Um, I think what I'm going to do as well while I'm at this now is come to my step lock and I'm going to put this to 2.5. Uh, why? tap, there we are, 2.5, uh, because um, 
it's halfway. It's it's half of five, and it's going to give me even more resolution. But I've still got my five node grid to work with. We'll see if that makes sense shortly. So the first thing I want to do here actually uh, is create a series of arcs for the arcs you see here, and I'm going to stick with step lock here. And what I'm trying to do is kind of find find the midpoint of that circle. So this is going to be a little bit experimental. In fact. Again, let's just bring this across here. So when I, when I hold on my mouse button and expand, I get this. Let's just work with a series of radiuses. So I'm going to imagine that that's going to be about 50 millimeter radius. And let's just see if that kind of works. Yeah, look, what a good guess. For me, that works beautifully. I am liking that. Now, does it work here as well? Not quite so well, but you know what? I, I'm going to live with it. I'm going to stick with it because I like things simple. What about down here? That doesn't quite work as well, but again, I am going to live with it. I'm going to go for that, and here, do we do that? I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with that and see what happens. This looks really cool. Uh, let's just get some dimension lines in here. All of these are the same. They all have a 30 millimeter diameter. Um, yeah, 30 millimeter diameter. And there you go. Um, Let's now get some, let's go with a polyline, an open polyline. So let's see what I'm going to do here. In fact, no, what I want to do is I want to get a tangent onto this, don't I? Oh my goodness, how am I going to do this? Oh look, here it is, oh, what luck. Okay, so I'm going to go draw a tangent to an arc, okay, from a point, okay. That looks promising. So if I come up to here and click there, and then I locate this line, this circle, look, I'm purposefully clicking, not exactly on the tangent, slightly off. That's awesome. Oh, what a good guess. Oh, I fluked that, didn't I? Right, look, that comes in. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. I love it. Right, let's go to the last, where's my last zoom function? I'm losing it. Last, there it is. Okay, that's really cool. Can I use that same feature to do this line? Now look, I'm going to go straight to the right here. Or do I? No, I'll go there. I'll go there. And then click on that circle. That's looking really, really cool. I'm going to select this original square that I created here. And I'm also going to make that so it's pale grey there. Then I can really see what I've done and what I've, what I've still got to do. Okay, uh, let's have a see. I'm going to keep this tool a bit longer. While it's working, let's just let's just use it. So I'm going to go from there into there. Uh, yeah, this, this is slightly staggered to the left of the actual grey A. So I'm going to bring it into there. And I think everything else I can just snap onto the grid. Uh, looking good, yeah, let's, let's do this. So let's now come to my polyline tool, which is what I had before. I'm going to join those together, and I'm working with the grid here, so everything snaps beautifully. Please work with the grid. Please make your life simple. It, it's essential. If you don't have the grid on, things are not going to snap together. It's, it's a nightmare, okay? Keep it simple. Let's have a look here. What do I do? I don't know. I'm going to go there. Yeah, because look, look, look this, this line here kind of... <sighs> okay, you know, I'm going to do something fancy here. I'm going to do that. It's a polyline so I can keep drawing. I'm going to go to there. I'm going to go to there and right click and finish. Now, the fancy thing I am going to do, which is this, does this have a purpose? Well, I don't want to do that. We'll see. I'm going to go to the dimension line tool. I'm going to come to the angular dimension tool. And I'm, what I want to do here is uh, I want to I want to get some dimensions. Hang on a second. I'm missing I'm missing something. I'm missing something. Let's draw a line. Let's draw a line there. Okay. Good. Right click. Okay. I want to see if this line here and this line here, voila, are the same. Okay. Well, there's like less than a one degree in it. Um. I'm gonna run with that. I'm happy. Okay, so let's just delete those, delete those, and delete that line there. Okay, that's all I was going to do. That was it. Was it useful? Well, I thought it was. Let's keep going. Uh, I'm going to draw a line from there to there. Boom, there we are again. Grid locks, step lock, it's all beautiful. And then down here, because this is a 30 mil diameter, 15 mil radius circle, then look, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be... 5, 10, 15, and then it's snapping onto the grid. So I can pull that down, 
pull it across, pull it back. That's lined up perfectly with this circle. Oh, just beautiful. Keep it simple, folks. If you're not using the grid, if you're not planning ahead, if you're not making things align and snap and connect, you're going to have massive problems. If it's going wrong, save it and start again. Save it so you've got it as a backup. You can go back to it if you need to or reflect on it. Just start again or, or you know, move the whole thing to the side. I'll do that in a second and start again. Anyway, let's finish this. Bring it up, click to there, right click. Now, that is, that's essentially done. And when I mentioned a second ago, if it's going wrong, move it to the side. This is what I mean. I'm now going to select all of this. I'm going to turn grid lock on so everything's snapping. Okay? really important and I'm gonna pull this to the side okay and you know if that had gone wrong I could now start to get in here I could, I could select this square copy paste okay bring it in I know this is 150 by 150 okay Let, let's, let's just prove that that is 150 by 150 we're all good okay I'm going to get rid of that now because I know it. I'm happy. Um, and then, then just start again. But in this case, I know I'm good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select this shape. Here we go. Put it across to the side of it. There we go. Like that. I'm going to select all of that. I don't want the square. Shift select. Um, and now what I'm going to do is deselect the actual letter. Now the letter itself, bish bash bosh, is there. I don't want that. Um, and I'm going to copy it. Now, let's just zap that square. I don't want that either. Or whatever, actually. No, I'll keep it. I'll keep it. And I'm going to paste that, and I'm going to drop it in and position it where I want it. Right, okay. Which is actually, that's not there. It's there. There you go. Absolutely wonderful. Um, this is slightly too close to it. It's just overlapping. Let's pull, pick that up there. Let's bring it across to the side there so they are not overlapping okay now so I've, I've I've got this here that's my backup it's safe I'm happy we're good and of course don't forget to save it I've not saved this yet no there's a power cut something crashes I've lost it all so save your work I'm going to keep going I'm, I'm going to risk it let's delete that dimension line I've got it safe over here let's tidy this up I am in fact going to delete the outline because it's going to cause me problems otherwise um, I'm going to come to delete part and I'm going to trim back what I don't want. I don't want that. I don't want that. Nor that. Nor that. No. Go. Go. Bye bye. Bye bye. Et voila. That is absolutely magnificent. And we are good to go. Um, now, uh, what am I going to. No, I'm going to stop there. This video is over. I'm happy. In the next video, uh, video, I do need to dimension this up in more detail because remember, I am going to be taking this design into Fusion 360 and to do that, uh, I will need the rest of these dimension calculations. But I will put it on hold now because I am at 13 minutes and that's crazy. So that's it for now. Hopefully see you in the next one.